Yo, what's up, guys? We're live. Um, if you're on the replay, give me hashtag replay. Uh, you're gonna want to take notes for this one because uh, I'm gonna drop some fire about like there's this big misconception about how to make money with podcasting that people have wrong, and uh, I'll address it all in this episode. So if you're on the replay, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Drop them below. Um, you can kind of skip through the video. I'm gonna just like wait like 30 seconds uh, to see if any who hops on. Uh, we can skip through the video as well. I don't know how long it's gonna be. Um, but uh, I'm pretty excited to because people have this like uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into it actually I'm gonna wait a little bit till people hop on um, but I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving and um, you're not in a food coma right now because I know I have been for the past morning with leftovers and family and such so uh, fun times but so let's just hop into it let me get a sip of my tea and I'll hop into it if people hop on cool actually I'm gonna pull this up in my phone so I can see the comments because I can't see the comments right now uh, let's go here. Cool. Um, if you're gonna replay, uh, let me uh, replay. turn this off. Thanksgiving. I can't see any comments on my t on my computer. This is weird. Um, but I got my phone pulled up. Cool. So, um, firstly, making money with podcasting. Um, it's not gonna happen quick if you don't have an audience already that knows, likes, and trusts you. People just don't buy from people like just because you have a podcast. First of all, it's a big misconception. Uh, what's up, Eric? What's up, man? Cool, man. Uh, curious to know how your podcast is coming along if you're, if you're at the launch phase or where you're at, man. Um, but, uh, so like it would be amazing to make money with podcasting. Um, uh, but it isn't always that easy as, as people seem, make it seem because there's a lot of that comes before that. Like it depends how, how you want to make money with podcasting. Um, if it's your products, then it's a whole different skill set you need. If it's other people's products or if it's sponsors, it's a whole different skill set that you need. Um, but the main premise of it is that you have to have know how to build an audience that knows, likes, and trusts you uh, with your content. Cause then like they'll buy from you like out of, out of love. So um, I don't think you should come into podcasting with the sole driver to make money. A lot of people come into podcasting with that uh, idea in their mind, but it's like, you know, wanting to have a house uh, without buying the bricks. It's like you want something, but you don't value the, the foundation of something. And what it means if you guys are on live give me hashtag live by the way get this boosted up um yeah so the point of podcasting is to build uh your story and your fingerprint in your market and by fingerprint meaning like why you're unique uh what is your community different what's different about you guys what, what's your value proposition what's your what's your blue ocean um and it's practice you're gonna suck at the start but you suck at everything at the start it's like riding a bike you never were good at the start of it so um yeah, so, um, and you also need to start diversifying. I'm seeing if there's any comments here. Um, you need to start diversifying because, like, I know you guys have seen, like, Facebook this past week has been acting very weird um, <coughs> as far as engagement because, like, they're favoring paid traffic. So, like, if you don't diver diversify your audience and where people are listening to you, um, you're going to be in uh, big doo-doo. That's all I got to say. Um, so I'll get into the four ways to monetize in a little bit. I'm just going to – give you guys a little pre-story. Uh, but the four ways are either your products, which is my favorite. Uh, then it's uh, affiliate products. Um, then it's coaching and masterminds. And then it's sponsors, which I will tell you guys right now before we get into the sponsorship section that uh, sponsors is not how you make the most of your money with podcasting. It's a big misconception that people have because of other industries. They think sponsors is how you make money. Um, but I, I know there's a lot of clients I have who – they make money from sponsors. They have sponsors. Um, but even then, that's not where they make the most of their money with their podcast. It's just a supplement. Um, uh, sponsoring is a, it's like a, it's an art, knowing how to sponsor your show good so that it doesn't annoy your audience, but that it, but, so it actually works for you and the sponsor. So I'll be going over that as well. Um, but you'll also be like amazed about how much better of a speaker you'll become when you start doing podcasting. And that alone, like people think of podcasting as a short-term ROI. Like, you know, what can I make now? You know, but it's it's so bad the mentality people have, at least in the space I'm in, the entrepreneur space, where uh, they're looking for that quick ROI. They don't think about the long term branding, like three to five years from now. What am I doing now? It's gonna cement me in my market for three to five years. Like, what are the relationships I could build now? Podcast is one of the easiest way to build relationships with people. Else, by the way, um, you're literally just like, I've I've I mean, a few stories for me. Like my business partners came from a podcast. I interviewed them. Um, it's a very good opportunity to connect with people and just to like 
because people will drive your business more than anything. And when I say people, I mean your audience or people that you work with. Um, so uh, we got, I think Eric, you're the only one on, man. So if you have any questions, let me know, dude. Uh, but I'll kind of, I'll, I'll go through this a little more. Um, so like there, most people never get a pack, a podcast past seven episodes. Most people, which is insane. And that's because uh, it's not tied to their identity, their brain identity. So they'll never make money because they're never, they don't understand the principles of podcasting. Like, <laughs> excuse me, you have a solid launch. Uh, make it listenable so people actually like it and then have some longevity in it. And then people will start buying from you. And by longevity, I mean like listening to a podcast is like a relationship. Um, I won't subscribe to a podcast and keep listening to it if I feel like there's something shady going on. If they're not posting consistently, uh, if I'm not getting the answers I want from the podcast, um, if it, I feel like uh, it's just they're not good at what they're doing, I'll stop listening to it. It's like a relationship. If you feel like you're not getting anything in return, you'll just end the relationship. Uh, so that's how you have to think of it. Um, yeah. So like I said before, sponsors are not the best way to make money. So let's go into my favorite way first on how to make money with podcasting. And that is uh, promoting your own products. So this is the best way, but this is also, I wouldn't say the hardest way, but it's the way that most people suck at um, because they're not a marketer. A lot of people get into podcasting and they don't understand the principles of marketing, which is like uh, to be a good marketer, you have to be an event thrower. Um, means like you have to know how to build hype for something and you have to know how to release the hype with like a product or some sort of offer. And then you have to know how to like kind of die down with like a limit on offer and you rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. What's up, Leslie? Uh, I was actually going to send you a message earlier. Um, I sent you that email, but, uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Um, so it's also really easy to make money when you interview people to have on your podcast. Um, and the type of call to action I would have for those type of, for interview style podcasts is like a free lead magnet or opt-in, especially because the audience you're bringing in that's new, is usually a cold audience. And uh, you don't want to just like have a call to action. It's like, Hey, buy my big product, whatever. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question in one second, Eric, just trying to see where I'm at. Um, yeah. So like when you start to be able to present people's problems better than anyone else in your market, then you're assumed to have the best solution. That's what Stephen Larson said. So, I mean, if you can explain my problems to me that I'm going through right now, uh, and Leslie, you're kind of doing this with like your business stuff. Like I'm going to go to you for the solution because you told me who I am more than me. And then that, so I'm going to start to trust you. And that's what podcasting is. Like you're breaking things down for people and you're giving them value, value, value. And then, they're gonna to want to buy from you naturally, like as like instinctively. Um, so that's how you get people to start buying from you. Um, if you have, if you already have an audience, it's so easy to make money from podcasting. Um, and I would keep your call to action short at the start, probably no more than thirty seconds, um, and make your call to action specific and unique uh, to your podcast. So make it seem like make people feel special for being a listener. So offer a special discount code uh, that they get nowhere else, um, and uh, listen to your audience for ideas and stuff. So uh, Eric ask uh let me see if i can show this <laughs> we launched our two origin stories we are focused on skincare market and niche down to microderm and we have 20 years in the market but we're not dominating yet um yeah that's a unique uh industry um i don't know how you want to relate it with podcasting and your because i don't know your business model and how you can develop a strategy around that um, if you let, let me know a little bit more your business model, because if it's e-commerce, it's so easy, but I don't know if it's like, uh, e if you guys do e-commerce or not. Um, so what's up guys, if you're on live, what's up Dean? Um, so now we're getting into promoting affiliate offers. Um, and that's easy because like, uh, if you're interviewing someone that you're already going to interview, uh, just make sure you interview people who have good offers that you can present to your audience. And it doesn't seem pitchy because like you just interview them and they share their story. So it's like naturally people want to naturally buy from it. Um, discount code for podcast listeners, genius. You already know, uh, Leslie, I have tons of ideas. Um, so, uh, easy way to things to affiliate, uh, Amazon, obviously. Um, if you have, if you're mentioning little products here and there, um, just toss the link in your show notes. But, uh, if you're talking about brands, for example, if I have a, uh, like sleep optimization podcast and I talk about these glasses that help me sleep because they block blue light. Um, whenever you talk about a brand or a product in your podcast, reach out to that brand and tell them that you just mentioned them in their podcast. Be like, hey guys, um, this is how you start a conversation with potential sponsors or potential new guests. Be like, hey guys, um, I just talked about blank, blank, blank on my podcast. I think you guys would like it. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, 
And uh, that's a big way to open conversations with like high level people. Uh, what's this question here? Get a tip of C. Um, so many products, lots of confusion, crappy. Your stuff is quality. Um, how, do you have a podcast yet or have you thought of, of an idea of a podcast? Um, because that's definitely a niche market. Um, but there's definitely a lot of angles you can take there. <clears throat> Especially like if you can start in, like interviewing uh, people who are already big in the beauty space, like big influencers, that would be easy for you. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so when you're doing affiliate offers, just like sponsors, you want to make sure that the what you're promoting actually fits your audience. Uh, otherwise, the worst thing you can do is put a bad taste in your audience's mouth. If they feel like something's being forced, um, uh, it's going to be... Like I told you guys, it's a relationship you're building with people. Like if they feel like something they're being sold to, um, or like they're you're forcing something on them, they're gonna easily be like, "Oh, I don't." It's so easy to cut that relationship off from from them, and they'll probably never come back. So you want to be very delicate about what you're offering to people, and make sure that it's something that you would actually recommend or something that you would actually use. Um, and uh, yeah, you can search. There's tons of ways to find good affiliate offers online. Um, the best is. Uh, obviously like probably courses, but it depends what industry you're in, what niche you're in. Um, sometimes it's products. So, um, next is sponsors. Um, like I said earlier, I don't like sponsors, um, only because, uh, well, it depends. It depends. Um, sponsors is not how you're gonna make the most of your money podcasting. Like I said before, the clients we have who, who make money podcasting with sponsors, that's not even the majority of their income with their podcast. It's usually their offers. Sponsors are just like an income, uh, like a supplement. Um, and it's usually sponsors that are related to like what they're doing or they have partnerships with. So it's a natural, um, and there's also an art to how you sponsor people on your podcast or how you promote it. Um, you don't want to make it like, I think Andrew Warner does this and he does a really good job. Like he doesn't like, uh, stop the interview and then go into a sponsor and then start the interview. He doesn't make it like obvious that it's a sponsor. He'll actually put it into his content. Like Joe Rogan does it too. He'll like immediately after one idea of the day. And also guys, I've been using this and it's blah, 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 blah. So it sounds like it's a natural flow. So it sounds less like a sponsor and it sounds more just like a testimonial. So if you're going to do sponsorships, make it sound like testimonials and also how to price sponsorships is, uh, sell packages. Don't sell one-time deals. Um, so sell like one to three months and like sell slots and packages of five or 10 and the pricing of packages. Uh, there's a website called advertisecast.com. Um, and they have a calculator for what the industry standard is. Um, usually like a 30 second slot is like $10, but it depends on how many downloads you're getting per audience. So like a thousand downloads per audience is probably like $10 or 30 second slot, which isn't a lot. Uh, but it could be more if you're really good at pitching yourself and selling yourself. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Yep, give me a hashtag live if you guys are on. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I kind of went it through uh, a few ways to monetize, and like, so you guys might have to watch this again. But uh, right now, I'm talking about sponsors. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you're monetizing from your podcast, let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys are doing. But um, let's move on to the next one: uh, coaching and masterminds. Uh, this is obviously dependent on your niche and like how good of a community you have. Um, and what your business model is, but coaching is awesome, especially if you can provide people value on your uh, podcast that's similar to coaching. It's an easy upsell for people. And um, it could, uh, I mean, it could work for very niche things as, as well if you want to specific, like if you have a podcast about how to get good at board games, you know, you can uh, offer coaching about how to get good at board games, like, but more specific to them. So coaching is obviously more detailed for, for what their situation is while your podcast should be more broad topics of solving that for people. Um, and obviously most call to actions, I recommend offering at the end of the episode, because if someone listens to your whole episode, uh, then they're easily prime and they're hot. <laughs> um, yeah. So like I was saying before, uh, promoting your products, and this is honestly what I tell people the most, like you have to create offers that people want to buy. And also if you're doing affiliate offers, like, uh, and I learned this from Stephen Larson, if you're, if you're selling people's affiliate products, make it an offer where it's like, let's say I have uh, this person on my show and on, the, on my audience, he's going to talk about how to grow Facebook groups. And at the end of the, at the end of the interview, he's going to have a product that shows you how to grow Facebook groups, whether it's like a plugin or something. Um, I wouldn't just have him present that. I would tell people, Hey guys, uh, this is what he, that he has. He has this product. If you buy it now, I'll also give you my product and my X, Y, Z. So now you're making an offer. And you're making it a no brainer for people. So uh, if you're going to do affiliate model, uh, create offers. Don't just have them pitch their product. 
um, be like, hey guys. So you, that's more back and forth with the guest and figuring out what they're doing and how you can complement their product so it becomes easy for people to buy. Um, that's a really good thing to do as well. And especially if you're doing email, like affiliate marketing, um, that's a very smart thing to do. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. I didn't wanna go too long on this. Um, but I really wanna like put that out there that if you're in podcasting to make money from the start and you don't have an audience, you're gonna be, how do I say this? It's, it's more of a journey than you think, um, but it's a good journey. It's a journey you need. You need to diversify attention and you need to get, be skilled at different platforms that aren't just Facebook, that aren't just Instagram because like podcasting is going nowhere. So if you, if you put in the time for six months to a year to develop a solid podcast, that is a strong audience. Like, and that's not going anywhere. No one's owns your feed. That's something that you own. It's like your email list. You own your email list. When you have a podcast and you build an audience, you own that. You can't lose it. The platform isn't going to take it away from you. You own the feed. You own the subscribers. So um, that's why it's like very powerful. Like a Facebook thing, you can get banned. Amazon, like you can get banned if you have customers, if you have a brand on Amazon, like happened to me. I had a big uh, list of customers uh, and I for like my uh, print on demand products on Amazon and I got banned because there was some sort of copyright infringement. Um, but I wasn't really copyright infringing. I just like used a Lego man in my, whatever, that's another story uh, for when I used to do e-commerce. So um, deep down, we will all love to make a lot of money with podcasting. <laughs> but like I said, it's a, you, it's different than what you guys think. Like you're building an audience and that takes time and it takes skill. Like that's a lot of, a lot of people don't talk about that too. The skill you have to develop of developing your attractive character. Like be comfortable sucking at first, but this is a skill that you want to get down. Like when you understand how to tell stories and how to uh, know what your problems are and speak to people's problems and your niche and your and your target market, then you're to understand how to talk their solutions because you understand them so good that when it comes to offering the solution, their 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 ears are open, they're perked because you've been talking to them about what they've been needing. Um, if there's any questions, guys, let me know. I don't see any questions coming in. Uh, about monetizing the podcast, if you guys have any struggles or if you're curious about any different ways or if you even have a podcast, I'm curious who here who has doesn't have a podcast or not. I know Leslie, uh, we're talking. Um, Eric, I don't know if you have a podcast. Mike, I don't know if you have a podcast. A look or Dean, let me know. Um, curious to see how I can help you guys out while I'm on this live, while you have my attention. Um, so yeah. And uh, depending on what your niche is, you want to make sure you're developing a proper value ladder that gets people in the door. Don't just like, um, I would. I, I like testing with multiple call to actions in a podcast. Um, start with free and uh, <laughs> like, don't expect to make money from your podcast in the start. Like that, you should not have that in your mind. A lot of people say like, especially for my group, when I ask people to come inside, like what's their number one goal and to make money. Well, yes, that's a good goal, but <laughs> it shouldn't be the first goal unless you have an audience. If you have an audience, awesome, kudos. You're gonna make a lot of money with podcasting. Um, you launch an anchor with two episodes. Awesome. Uh, what's up, Alvin? You're a little late, dude. You might have to catch the replay because I'm about to sign off a little bit. Um, but if you have any questions dude, about monetizing podcasts, let me know. Um, that's a, I'm curious, man, um, because one of the most important parts of launching a podcast is launching a podcast, like having a good launch, like having the hype and getting a lot of people subscribe in the start and making it have a professional feel. So people feel like they're committed to, um, what are your thoughts on documenting your journey style podcast? hundred percent, dude. I love it. Um, you want to create the hero's journey. So people know, uh, where you're at and they, obviously like you're going to become someone huge eventually if you start doing that. Um, but people connect or they want to know like transformation or they want to go on that journey with you. Um, you just got to make sure that you're uh, providing valuable content in between that. So don't just make it about you because like people love stories, but only if there's context. So like, um, especially when I interview people, when I, when I interview them, um, I had them share their story, but only after they tell people why they're awesome and why they should listen. Unfortunately, people don't care about your story unless you tell them why they should care about it. So um, let them know like what your big goal is or what you're doing, why you're awesome, and then go into your story. So you got to anchor people um, and let people know where you're headed towards, like what the community you're trying to build. And when you're doing that, you're creating your brand identity and you're creating your blue ocean, so to speak. Like this is how things used to be. This is how I want things to be. If, if you're like this and you want why, um, you gather people on that way. 
Thoughts on starting Anchor? Uh, you could do it, man. I just – I don't like Anchor <clears throat> just because uh, it's too – I mean, I haven't played with it. They're doing a lot of good things. They have a lot of funding, so they might be really good in the future. <coughs> but it's not good for professional work, just because you can't um, you can't use it on desktop. I'm pr- can you use it on desktop? This is this is a good question. I just know, like hosting platform guys, it's literally like one percent of the co- equation. I don't care what you use. Use Simplecast. Use Libsyn. Use Anchor. Um, I don't use Anchor just because uh, there's a few uh, distribution channels like that I don't think Anchor has right now. Um, but from what I hear, you can't upload episodes from your desktop, which is a problem. Um, I'm looking on their website right now. I'm just trying to check. <coughs> because when you professionally edit episodes, like it's all on desktop. So that's a problem. But I mean, if you're like a soccer mom and you have an audience and you and it's just like whatever your family, like record on anchor and upload it if you wanted to start practicing and get good but eventually you're going to need something with advanced statistics um, <coughs> uh, like Libsyn or simplecast is what we've been using lately um but like i told you guys hosting is literally like one percent of the solution like i hate when people tell me like or they like oh i'm not gonna start a podcast until i put this much money into my equipment and so i put a few thousand dollars into this setup um like it's so dumb. Like you just need a basic, like the basic mic, ATR twenty one hundred seventy dollars. Like there's people who are in the top one hundred, top fifty, still using that mic. Like you, there's a comes a point where it's diminishing returns, where you're trying to get better whatever equipment or like technology, but that's not what matters. What matters is like your content and the people that are listening, subscribers, lives you're changing with your content. So you should master just get the bare minimums and then get good at. Um, uh, exp- making content that solves people's problems and that like you understand their false beliefs and then you address that through content and you change people's lives and you create active listeners who do things and get results. And then it's just your, your number, your downloads grow like that, like that, like that. Otherwise, like if you uh, aren't actually giving people solutions or like bringing value to people, you're always going to be plateauing or you're going to be dropping because the new people aren't going to stay and the old people are going to leave and then you'll get new. It's just like, it's not good. You want to go up. And that only happens with momentum. <laughs> What's up, Daniel? Uh, if you have, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm um, just talking about uh, how to uh, monetize a podcast and how to make money. It's a big misconception people have about uh, they want to get into podcasting to make money. And if you never made money online, bad news for you. Podcasting is not the easiest way to make money online. But it is one of the strongest ways to develop relationships with people and to cement yourself in an industry and to network um, and you know, to feel confident about what you're saying and actually get data from your audience. Like if you're, if you start a podcast, that's actually around your why and your purpose. Um, then you know, you're going to be in it for the long run. A lot of people don't do that. They start podcasts as a tactic and they stop after a few episodes because like they're looking, they're not thinking about branding. They're not thinking about the long term. Um, and, um, they start with the wrong mindset. Like, You got to start with like understanding like, hey, I'm going to do 30 episodes, you know, whatever, one episode. I don't know what your time's like, but like one episode a week, two episodes a week, and I'm going to suck for 30 episodes. I'm going to get one list in every episode for 30 episodes. You're going to get good after those 30 episodes, and then you're going to understand the tricks. You're going to understand how to like get people to your podcast, whether it's through like Instagram or through Facebook groups or through Reddit. Um, And you're going to understand how to actually like retain people and give people results. So it's it's an important struggle to have. So there's so much opportunity to podcasting people aren't taking advantage of. Even the people with big audiences, they're not. It's so crazy. Like nowhere else on a – there is nowhere else that I know on the internet where you can have someone's attention for 30 minutes to an hour each episode. Like it's insane. Like that's, that's the dream. Like if I can get 30 minutes to an hour of your attention each episode, like I don't know where else you can do that. Maybe if you read a book, but even then like it's not as good as audio. Because audio is like emotion. You can evoke so much more emotion through audio than you can through texting. And your voice, if you can blueprint that or like not blueprint, fingerprint that in people's minds, they won't forget you. And then it's like when they start to listen to you, they start to associate you with whatever your movement or your purpose is. And it's just how you brand yourself and how you keep able to – like it's the best way to get people to remember you is through audio or video. Video, which is audio as well. Um, but um, – it's much easier for someone to forget you 
if you're like a blogger or something, if you're just text compared to audio, because now they're hearing your emotion. You have a unique character to you um, and you have unique stories that you're telling. And uh, you know, I can stop publishing for six months, but you'll still remember me because of my audio, my video. Um, so it's whole, it's a whole different story. So you want to start putting people in that life cycle of your podcast. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, kind of like to keep these not too short. Um, yeah, you can repurpose content hundred percent. Um, yeah, so I meant, I meant, I don't want to keep these too long because I want people to listen to the, uh, video into podcast. Hell yeah. But you want to make sure that your video isn't like, you're not showing information that's necessary for your visual field that you can actually listen. And, um, topic research. Do you ask audience or use keyword research? Hell yeah, dude. So when we create content for clients, we actually create SEO silos. And I don't know if you know what that term is. You can Google it, <coughs> but, um, Asking, surveying your audience is one powerful thing to do, uh, especially in the start of your podcast. Um, but people will only fill out surveys if you give them a gift, uh, whether that's a call or some sort of freebie. Um, um, but surveys are very powerful to get data. So keyword research, um, you want to look at what your competitors are doing and what's working best for them, what's ranking for them. Uh, you want to figure out what interviewers on in your industry are getting the most clicks and then try to get them to be interviewed on a show. Um, and that's all through research. And, uh, Create SEO silos. So that means like if you have a brand and your brand is uh, sports, uh, what are the like five different subsections you're going to talk about in sports? Are you going to talk about the physical part? Are you going to talk about the mental part? Are you going to talk about training? You're going to talk about like basketball. And then in those each ones, you can waterfall out into more sections. And then each one of those, you can waterfall out more. So get really broad in your podcast, like five main topics, five main keywords, and then waterfall each one of them and uh, do that all like in a spreadsheet. And through that, uh, when you create, this is a big strategy that we do with people. It's not necessary for everyone, but, uh, when we create the blog post, we have each one of them linking back to each other. So it's a lot of backlinks. Um, and it's just really good for SEO. Um, especially transcripts helped a lot for SEO. If you transcript your uh, podcast and you can use those transcripts to create like quote cards and you can honestly flip a transcript into another blog post, which is awesome. Um, especially if you're talking a lot, like I am like, I don't know how many words I said this live, but like, Let's say I said 1,500 words. Um, probably not that much, 1,000. Uh, that's a blog. I can use this to make a blog if I want to, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, and they're really cheap. Temi.com is like 10 cents a minute, and it works very well. You just have to make sure your audio quality is good. Um, otherwise, it's not so so good. Gold, dude, I appreciate it, bro. If it's gold, bro, give me a hashtag gold. Um, and it also, guys, invite your friends to this group. If you have any friends who uh, are into podcasting, um, invite them to this group. Um, yeah. And if you guys don't know, I have a Black Friday Cyber Monday sale going on with my uh, seven-figure downloads course. Um, it's on sale till Monday, two ninety seven, and then it's going up $100 every week, and it's never going to come back down. Like, that's how good this course is now that I got Ryan Helms. He added, like, 30-plus videos. Right now, I'm adding, like, 10 videos within the next day. Um, specifically, I can even go through the, the videos I'll add real quick. Um I'll go through that another time in another video. But uh, any questions, thoughts on building a funnel like marketing secrets or having a website? Uh, I, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, you should have both. Like if you have a podcast, you should have a website section on your podcast. Um, just like I said, you want to, when you're sending traffic to your podcast, especially if you have guests and you're telling them to direct traffic to your podcast, you want to direct them to a blog post. Don't direct them to your iTunes because when you do that, one thing you're getting them on your Facebook pixel. So have a Facebook pixel on your site. Um, you're getting them on Google analytics. So you're getting data about them. Like where do they live? What times do people like logging in? Um, <clears throat> uh, what's their gender? What's their age? You get, you get a lot of information from Google analytics and it lets you retarget. Um, and also it's like, there's more that you don't want to direct people to your iTunes cause there's no like, opt-ins there only if they listen they send people to your blog uh they'll be like oh he has this cool thing here or oh i didn't know he does coaching i didn't know so it's just better exposure for you if you have a blog um yeah building funnels of podcast <laughs> you can <laughs> so there's multiple ways to script episodes for podcasts i would do it like you're doing a webinar so i don't know if you know the perfect webinar which i actually have on my wall i can go grab it real quick actually give me a sec Hmm. <clears throat>
I don't have many things on my wall, but uh, this is one thing I have on my wall because it's so important. It's called the perfect webinar, but <coughs> so let's see if you guys can see the picture. Uh, the perfect webinar. I don't know if that's backwards, but uh, so the intro is the bold promise. Uh, you want to hook them to the end. Uh, I can't really read it, but uh, I'll go through it real quick. Um, you want to command attention in the intro. You want to qualify yourself uh, and then future pace them. So pretty much the intro is the hook. Hook story offered. Like if I had simplified this for you, every podcast episode should be hook story offer. Um, and when I say offer, I don't mean like in the episode. I mean like your call to action. Um, love everything Russell Brunson. Yeah. I met him at Dream 100 Con, dude. And, <laughs> and when I met him, I was talking to him for a little bit, like for a few minutes. And uh, uh, we were talking about charities actually because I'm not going to go to a guy and talk to him about what everyone else is talking about, you know, marketing because he probably fucking hates that. Um, so I was telling him about some like charity work I, I, I donate to and I like how I love that he does all this charity work for in Africa. And um, he told me at the end, he's like, dude, you should try to come with us in 2020 to Africa for another trip. And I'm like, there's a goal, bro. There's a goal. So, you know, maybe when I get to comic club, I can go with Russell to Africa. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you create your content, um, you want to have the three secrets um, and this is all to rebuild and break down their pattern and the three secrets to just be breaking all our false beliefs. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's the, this is, this, uh, I'm going to FHL. Yeah. Uh, I just got a place a mansion with a few people, uh, Peter Pru and like probably like eight more of us. It's going to be awesome. Um, but this isn't a, this live wasn't about the perfect webinar. So I, I didn't really prepare that for you guys. Um, yeah, so I will have – if you guys have any ideas for other episodes you would like me to – or lives you want me to discuss, whether it's like episode scripting or uh, technology or whatever you guys want me to talk about, how to get guests um, and how to like systematize that process, um, whatever you guys want, let me know. I'll be doing more lives now and uh, just literally giving you guys everything. Uh, so drop them below. I'll read them. I'll take notes for them, and I'll start going live more. So uh, – <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you made it this far, give me a hashtag Showtime. Uh, my podcast is coming out next month, dude. Um, I just been pretty busy with some agency stuff, so I haven't launched it. Um, I'm actually I was recording an episode today, so I'll be launching that. You'll hear about it. I just don't want to launch it at the same time as my product that I'm launching right now. Which, if you guys don't know, go to sevenfigurdownloads.com. Um, you'll see my offer. It's three hundred dollars. Like this offer is insane. Like the course is not, and you get lifetime access as well. So, in two weeks, this course could be five hundred dollars. <coughs> so, and you also get weekly calls. We do weekly calls. Um, so, if you have any questions, like directly for your podcast, and if you want direct help as far as strategy, almost like a coaching every week for a limited amount of time, um, you'll get that right now in the offer. We're not going to offer that forever. It's literally just what we have right now in the course. Um, so, we want to get. So once we get like 50 to 100 more signups, uh, we're going to cut that off. So if you want to be part of the weekly calls, um, join the course. Like that alone, without the without the 75 plus videos, the weekly calls is worth it. Like what is that? A month? Um, honestly, think about it. Like this is going to be going on forever. Like so every month, if it's $300, each call is whatever, $75. Now multiply that by three. Every call comes out to like. $25 and even cheaper, the more, the longer you go through it. And, uh, these calls are like specifically about people who have podcasting and solving their problems. <laughs> and that's just one part of the offer we have for some figure downloads. Go to the, go to the page and you'll see everything else we're offering all of our templates, our guides, our workbooks. Um, so if you are thinking about starting a podcast, uh, that course is for you. What's up, Scott? Hashtag showtime. Uh, if you guys aren't in the course, get in there because I'm not, this isn't scarcity. Like, um, the price is going to raise up and then we want to keep it high because our focus is on the agency. It's not going to be on the info product. I just wanted to keep it low for black Friday, Saturday, Monday, cause that's what everyone's doing. But, uh, it's to be raising every dollar, hundred dollars every week. So we already got a few people in, in the past day. Um, and they're super like happy and psyched and like we're, we're constantly DMing them, DMing them. Um, so guys have any questions about that or anything else? Uh, let me know. I'm going to sign off here soon. Um, I appreciate all the hashtag show times. You guys are ready. Uh, I honestly believe everyone should have a podcast <coughs> just because of you won't realize. And Steven said this, at offer mine, how much a podcast will change your life. If you publish for six to 12 months, I know, you know, this, uh, Scott, you've been podcasting for a bit. Um, and you know how much it's like not only your life, but like your opportunity and like your mindset of like what's possible. 
Um, because if you control the media, um, you control the narrative uh, in a way. So you want to control the narrative in your industry. So peace out, guys. Uh, we'll talk soon.